Good morning, everyone. Good morning. A very cold welcome to every one of you sitting in the congregation. Last week, um, Ava was just singing, it's beginning to look like, uh, a lot like Christmas. <laughs> and I think for her, Christmas came early. Today is a very special Sunday for all of us. Um, it's a joyous occasion uh, for David and his family who are here. But it's also a wonderful occasion, a, quite a significant occasion for Hope Church because David will be the first elder to be ordained as Hope Church. So you're making history, my friend. <laughs> well, as we conclude uh, the service, uh, I invite you to all come for some teas and coffees and just welcome David and his family. I think your presence and your encouragement will mean a lot to him. Um, a warm welcome to all of us joining us online. Uh, it's fantastic to have you um, every Sunday and thanks for your comments, for your encouragement. Um, your presence truly matters. And if you'd like to connect with us, please email us or uh, get in touch through phone and um, we will be in touch with you. Today is also a very special Sunday because it's a first Advent. Are you all gearing up for Christmas, folks? Yes. Um, no. Lights are up. No. Grandkids are coming home. Yep. Yes, yes. Uh, and it's fantastic, isn't it? The Christmas season is just beginning and the first Advent uh, candle will be lit by Haley. So Haley, could you like come forward and help us light our first candle? And guess what, folks? It's called the candle of hope. That's what Haley is going to light now. There you go, Haley. I hope it works. Oops. There you go. It symbolizes our hopeful anticipation for the coming of Christ. Yes, you got it. <laughs> Thank you, Haley. Um, it symbolizes the prophecies uh, that has been spoken about the birth of Christ. So I hope that this service will be a blessing to all. Uh, because I'm just really looking forward for this service. Before we start, I always start with a light-hearted moment. And I just heard <coughs> about this story, folks, that there's been a church that's been struggling with a lot of squirrels in the attic and in the cupboard. And it's been an absolute nuisance for them. They tried all the trick in the book. They tried to just use chemicals to chase it away or just use traps, nothing worked. And one elder on fine morning came to the minister and said, let's baptize all these squirrels. <laughs> so the minister said, oh, that's a good idea. Just they're here, might as well baptize them. So they baptized and the problem just disappeared. There's no squirrels anymore because they just showed up only for Christmas and Easter. <laughs> Let's begin our service with the call to worship. We are the body of Christ. Each of us is a member of it. There is one ministry of Christ. In this ministry we all share. There are different ways of serving God. It is the same Lord who we serve. So let us praise and worship God now with our first hymn, From Heaven You Came, Helpless Babe. Please stand. From heaven you came out was Enter our world with glory there. 
not to be shared, but to share. And give your life that we might live. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us not to follow him. We bring our as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. There in the garden of truth, my heavy load he chose to bear. His heart with sorrow was Let not my will, but yours be said. Those days are gone, the servant king. He calls us not to follow him. To bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. Come see his hand and his The stars that speak of sacrifice. Hands up from the To cruel nails surrender. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us not to follow him. To take our minds as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. So let us learn how to serve, and in our lives then told each other. For it is Christ we are serving. Is this our God? The servant king, he calls us not to follow him. Living our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. That was wonderful singing. Well done, you all. <laughs> Is my mic working? No? Um, can you hear me? Yes? All right. No? Who said no? No, you can't hear? All right. I think maybe I need a change of battery. All right. Anyway, I'll continue in prayer. And then we will just change during the second hymn. Let us come to God in prayer. God of unfailing grace, we come to your house today to praise your holy name. For you are the eternal King of glory and you are worthy of all our praise. And you are our Father in heaven, and you have blessed us beyond measure. And as we draw near to your throne, we do so reverently, thoughtfully, and humbly, and yet without fear. Because in Christ you yourself invite us to come, to enter into your holy presence with joyful and thankful hearts, in the knowledge that you love us 
and gave us your only Son for our salvation. And through him have lavished on us all the riches of your grace. Lord, we remember the words of the well-known hymn. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. To his feet your tribute bring. Ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. Evermore his praises sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the everlasting King. Lord, how good it is for us to be reminded time and time again of all that you have done for us in order that the truth of the gospel might sink deep within us each and every day so that we might be ready and be willing to respond to your call on our lives. Lord, with great joy and delight, we come simply trusting and obeying you. And we come to you, Lord, in the quietness of your house. And we take a moment to remember your goodness to us personally. And as we look back over the recent days, to give thanks for your great faithfulness and to count our blessings and to name them one by one. Now, Lord, we ask that you would draw near to us. Help us to draw near to you in this service and hear us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debtors, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> Folks, we're going to sing our next hymn, There is a Redeemer. And at that time, I'm just going to just nip in and change my batteries. <laughs> there is a Redeemer. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
in that holy place. Thank you, my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit to the earth on earth is done. Uh, it's time for Bible reading, and I would like to invite George to come and read the Word of God. <clears throat> Good morning. The first of the two readings, short readings, is from James 3. Can you hear me? Okay. The mic's working. Well, I'm going to apologize to the people who can't hear me because I'll talk louder. <laughs> <laughs> my, wife, well, my wife normally says, tone it down, George. But anyway, <laughs> the first of the two readings is from James 3, and we're reading verses 13 to 16. Subtitled, Two Kinds of Wisdom. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly and spiritual demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. And the second reading is from 1 Peter 5, verses 1 to 4, and it's to the elders and the flock. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's sufferings, who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be. Not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. Not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Amen. And these are the words from our living God. Thank you, George, for the reading. Today's hymns were chosen by David himself. Uh, those are his favorite hymns. So the next song that we are going to sing is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. So uh, let's stand up and sing our next hymn. And I hope the Gatongis will sing it in a cappella. friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear, what a privilege to marry, everything to God in prayer, oh what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Can we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And we find a friend so faithful who with God's heart will share. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak 
take and heavy laden. Come, but with the Lord of care. Jesus is my only to the Lord in prayer. In His arms you take and shield you. You will find the solace there. Please be seated. Before I just share my reflection, just I uh, want to uh, give you a heads up on the next two Sundays. The principal clerk of the Church of Scotland is coming um, next week to come and share her experience and also share the Word of God. So please do come encouraged, and I also encourage you to bring your friends and family. And the following uh, week, we will have the architect who will come and present uh, a future uh, of the Hope Church building um, and also, um, you know, share what, what she sees uh, as a church moving forward and recommend to the congregation her views. We as a Kirk Session thought we will just ask uh, a third party to come in and do an appraisal and that's what she's going to do. And she's going to present uh, our findings, and also do a presentation to us on the 17th. 17th evening, we will have a carol service, and also the 24th, uh, that, that's the Christmas Eve service as well. On the 14th, we have NHS choir uh, coming and singing here at the church halls. There's only 30 seats available, sorry, 40 available, so if you want to be a part of the concert, please do speak to Joyce and give your name because we have very limited seats at the church hall. On the 14th, on the afternoon, we have a special social gathering as well for all the housebound and the elderly. So please pray for these events and I really hope the people who come uh, to these events will be blessed. As we stand on the cusp of ordaining David as an elder, we are reminded of the immense blessing, folks, of all the gifted members uh, at Hope Church. If you just look around, uh, you can see throughout history that God has been good to us, graced us with a lot of elders and great with great wisdom and also a lot of ministers who have given their commitment and devotion to this ministry. So today's message, I hope, will deepen our gratitude to God for His overflowing grace and the goodness in these times. Of all the sermons that I've preached, today's message presents a unique challenge for me. As someone called to serve as a minister in this church, it's always delicate to talk and discuss about the work that you're actively engaged in. And I approach this sermon with deep humility and reliance uh, of God's guidance. And my hope today is that the message will amplify our collective role and spiritual responsibility God has given us, especially during these extraordinary times. Would you all agree that we live in unprecedented times of change in our lives, and especially in church as well, to make church real and practical and relevant in these modern times for the future generation? I should say it is a special calling to be a pastor or a minister. And I hope that it will be the same for all the elders who are sitting in this congregation as well. 
And I was just reading a book from Reverend Colin Smith and reading about direction and leadership. And he quotes this, Direction in a gospel-centered church does not come from any one individual. That would be coercion. Nor does it come from everybody in the congregation. That would be confusion. Direction in the gospel-centered church comes from those who have been tested and tried who have taken their spiritual responsibility seriously, who come to God humbly with prayer and read the Word of God, and this dual role of prayerful life and being firm in the Word of God will bring people together in unity, and that would be cohesion. I found that very helpful. Now, every church needs a leader. And Peter, in the first book, who's called the rock of the church, gives a template to all the shepherds. Elders, who are also known as overseers, are tasked with watching over the flock. Now, it is a big job, a big responsibility because it involves caring for people. And Peter reminds that this flock that God has given us and will give in the future will be God's flock. And he refers to Jesus, both as a shepherd and an overseer of our souls, and he is the chief shepherd. And he gives the job description, and he makes it very simple, folks. And he makes it very clear to all the elders and to the ministers. They guard the sheep against any danger. They protect the sheep from harm. They lead the sheep to places where they can find pastures. And they guide them with spiritual food. And they also search for sheep who got lost and who have become hurt. And Peter makes this message very clear. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care. Watch over them. Not because you must, but because you are willing to shape our lives and to shape our church's future in a way that reflects Jesus, our chief shepherd. Now, the decision to ordain David as an elder wasn't made lightly. It it came from a recommendation from a fellow elder and also from a lot of conversation and some personal visits to David's home, where I had a chance to go and meet David and his lovely wife, Catherine, who was sitting here. And I should just say that David did not uh, take this decision lightly. Uh, He took a lot of time, and he gave great care and reflection when he was asked to consider this role. And I should say, folks, this was all done in a lot of Kenyan style. They served me great Kenyan food. It was an impromptu food. And the whole vibe was just pure African style, I should say. It was a pleasure uh, to see their entire family, their bright faces with their big smile, and incredibly incredibly welcoming, and also very warm as well in their home, literally as well. (laughs) I was just floored by their love and hospitality, and I just thought David will be an ideal candidate for eldership. No, I was just kidding. When I was talking to David, the passage from James chapter 3 came to my mind. 
Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show by their good deeds, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. And when I was talking to David about his profession as a doctor, one thing that just struck a chord with me was his compassion and humility and empathy that was far-reaching. And when he was talking about the church, there was this obvious passion that he had and a spiritual intuition with his experience as well about how the church's direction uh, and also eager to integrate his professional expertise into his ministry as an elder and his desire to blend these aspects for the benefit of our church will actually be a great strength for us. We spoke at length about the ministry of bereavement and loss. And it was very obvious that he cared for people. Always striving to resolve conflicts. Always trying to make people heard, uh, feel heard and valued. And I really thought these kind of personality of him with his big smile and his characteristics will be an added bonus to our ministry. But today I just want to take this opportunity as we move forward as Hope Church. I want to highlight one verse that has been on my mind this whole week. And I want to set a clear vision of what Paul says about the role of the shepherd and the role of the church. And the verse that came to my mind is this, from Colossians chapter 1 and verses 28. It says, Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. And with that, I want to say the church is for everyone. The church should be open for everyone. Each and every one has an integral part to this church community. And it reminds me of James Ogle. Once said, the church isn't just an exclusive club for the sinless. It's not some special place guarded by gatekeepers. It's more of a sanctuary for the broken and the lost and the weary to find strength and peace in their lives. And it is our job as a church to present the gospel of Christ to everyone and to welcome everyone through those doors. A church is for everyone. And it's not just a physical space for congregation. Sometimes it's easy for us to just stuck in a physical space. But what Paul is saying, it's a nurturing environment for every person, regardless of age, background, or color, whether you are rich or poor, educated, or just do not have any education at all, none of that is a barrier in this church. And Billy Graham once beautifully said, the cross of Christ is a bridge between God and humanity. And it is open to all who will come to him. Max Lucado also said, the foot of the cross is the level ground where all stands equal before God's love. So our church's commitment should be first to present the gospel of Christ to every person who walks through that door. To him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present 
every man perfect in Christ Jesus. The second thing I want to just talk about is the purpose of the church. Every church has a purpose. Christ's church stands for something very significant, folks. We to follow Christ's call to perfection and to represent the love and action of Jesus. Desmond Tutu once said, the main purpose of the church is to be the visible body of Christ, acting as he acted and loving as he loved. The main purpose of the church is to be the visible body of Christ, acting as he acted and loving as he loved. And my prayer for Hope Church is that our members will help everyone in the church family to grow in the likeness of Jesus. Church isn't about just making people happy or just keeping things running as usual or just providing great services. It's about deep and meaningful change guiding everyone towards the holiness and perfection that Jesus exemplified. Tim Keller puts it really well. He says, in our modern world, the church's purpose is to navigate the complexities of our age while holding firmly the timeless teachings of Christ. This echoes what Paul actually says of what is the true purpose of the church. Him we preach, warning and teaching every person in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Our ministry at Hope Church should be about real transformation about changing people from the inside out, of steering them towards to become more like Jesus. It's not about how many people we can pack into the buildings. It's not about the grandeur of all the services that we do. It's not about the money we have or we don't have. That's all good. It's necessary to have that. But... The moment this church starts to think about the greatness of its budget, buildings, or numbers, Paul says it has lost its true purpose. We are here to evolve, to grow, to become more like Christ. It's about a lot more than maintaining some traditions or filling pews. We are on a journey of transformation. And it's the journey that keeps us aligned with our fundamental purpose. And that's what Paul says in Colossians. Him we preach, warning and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus the next thing that I want to share about that is in our Christian walk, think of perfection as Paul described it. Perfection in, is not a destination. Rather, it's a journey. It's a continuous process of growth. Just like how a child learns and develops over time, we as believers are always growing and maturing in Christ. And Paul in Philippians says it very openly about his own perfections. He calls himself chief of sinners. And this tells us something important, that none of us are perfect. None of us. Paul, with his utter devotion to Christ, and Peter, who is called the rock of the church, knew they had a long way to go in their personal lives. 
and he looked forward to becoming perfect one day, but he also knew that they cannot achieve the perfection in this world, but only in God's presence. Here's something very crucial to remember. This journey towards perfection isn't just for those who are sitting here. It includes even me. It includes all the elders and the leaders of the church. No one can attain Christ's perfection. But as the saying goes, God is pleased by your progress and not perfection. The Bible, folks, you know, is filled with stories of great heroes, isn't it? But even they were imperfect. Paul didn't hide his weakness. He always said, Lord, let my weakness be made perfect through your strength. He taught that being a Christian doesn't mean we are free from sin in this life. We all got flaws. And standing here today, and every time I come and stand here today, you may think that uh, a lot of people think, oh, Josh, you are full of smile and full of energy. You don't know. I fear and tremble in that room. Not because I am not confident, but to just carry the utter burden of taking the word of God to you. And I take it very seriously. As Paul says, leaders are imperfect. He acknowledged this, not that I've already obtained this or I'm already perfect, but I press on because Christ Jesus has made me his own. The guidance, the sermons I give, they apply to me as well and to all the lay leaders. And I really hope that whoever stands here and preaches or teaches will take that in a very serious way too. Our leadership team isn't perfect. But you might have heard that high wind blows on high hills, especially in Scotland. It's a reminder that leaders face their own challenges. But in the same book that I just quoted about direction, there's also another quote that I read. Good leaders must be protected from bad people. And good people needed to be protected from bad leaders. Isn't that so poignant to this day? Like you, we leaders have our struggles too. We are learning and growing. I am learning and growing. And despite the challenges, our histories, our setbacks, our lives, like Peter and Paul, we are not immune to life's problems. This is how life works. And leaders who are striving to do goodwill often face setbacks. And you know what Paul faced? Paul was called. He was accused by false teachers that he was a glutton, that he was a drunkard, that the devil possessed him. But this kind of criticism and slander has always been a common pattern. And I bet you might have experienced some of this in your own personal lives as well. And Paul warns us that the devil uses these kind of situation to cause disunity. And Martin Luther just hits the nail on the head where he says, there are two evils in spreading 
false accusation or spreading rumors. To promote rumors and untruths and to be willing to believe the evil and not the good. And let's be honest, it's easy to fall in this trap, isn't it? Especially in churches. And that's why it's so important for us as church to stand together, to pray for each other, to encourage each other, and to find strength in God's word. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. I just want to say the final thing is that perfection can be attained only by Christ. And Jesus is our ultimate example. Our goal here is to grow and to be more like Jesus, to inch closer to his fullness every day. It's not about how long we have been coming to church. It's about how much we have grown from within and how much we have transformed to be more like Christ during this time. I just want to end with something exciting, thrilling, because something is great on the horizon for us as Hope Church. We are in the process of envisioning a new church this means a new building for us, a new approach to ministry, a renewed vision. We might have a great building very soon, hopefully by faith. And I'm really, really looking forward for that. But I just want to also say that this church will be a temporary pit stop for us. This is a temporary address because our permanent address is up in heaven. This new face isn't about any one person or uh, any specific style of worship. The real heart of our mission moving forward, I hope, will be to lead more people to Christ, to cross and journey with them to the foot of the cross, guiding each and every individual to become more like Jesus. And today, as we celebrate the ordination of Dr. David Katonge as an elder of Hope Church, I hope that it's a perfect opportunity for all of us to reaffirm our commitment to Christ. We, each one of us, are the real church. We are the living temples, remember, of the Holy Spirit. We are the body of Christ collectively. And my deepest hope and prayer is that everyone who steps into our church will feel the undeniable pull closer to God each and every Sunday. So in silence, I invite each of you to make a personal commitment to be more like Jesus. Let's set our sights on our own struggles and our personal lives because God is calling every one of us to be more like him. Whatever the struggles we are facing, God is able to do more than we can ever imagine. Today is not just a new chapter for David, but also a great chapter for all of us as a church. So let's embark on this journey together with renewed hearts and unwavering dedication. And may our commitment today mark a new chapter of unity, strength, and grace in our church. Amen. Let us now hear the next song. It's a video song. It's a well-known hymn, Just As I Am. And after that, we will continue with the ordination of Dr. Ketonge. Just as I am
1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 4 says, There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through different people in different ways, but it is the same God who achieves His purpose through them all. Each one is given a gift by the Spirit to use it for common good. It is always a joy to use our gifts as a member of, of the Church of Christ, which is a body continuing his ministry in the world today. And those chosen for the office of eldership, a particular responsibility of caring for God's people and exercising oversight and leadership. David, today the Kirk session is met to ordain you to the office of eldership and admit you as an elder in this congregation. And due notice has been given and no objections have been made and we can therefore proceed. In the name of the Lord of Jesus Christ, the King and Head of the Church, who being ascended on high has given gifts for the building up of the body of Christ. And we are met to ordain to the office of eldership and admit to the office in the congregation, in this congregation, Dr. David Gatonge. And in this act, the Church of Scotland, as a part of Holy Catholic or Universal Church, 
worshipping one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, affirms anew its belief in the gospel of the sovereign grace and the love of God. Wherein through Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, incarnate, crucified and risen, and freely offers to all upon the repentance and faith, the forgiveness of sin, renewal by the Holy Spirit, and eternal life, and calls them to labor in the fellowship of faith for the advancement of the kingdom of God throughout the world. The Church of Scotland also acknowledges the word of God contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be the supreme rule of faith and life. The Church of Scotland hold as its subordinate standard the Westminster Confession of Faith, recognizing liberty of opinion on such points of doctrine that do not enter into the substance of the faith and claiming the right in dependence of the promised guidance of the Holy Spirit to formulate, interpret, or modify its subordinate standards, always in agreement with the Word of God. And the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith contained in the confession of which agreement the church itself will be the sole judge. David, in view of this declaration, you are now required to answer this question. Do you believe the fundamental doctrines of Christian faith? And do you promise to seek the unity and peace of this church to uphold its doctrine, worship, government, and discipline, and to take your due part in the administration of its affairs? I do. Thank God you said that. <laughs> <laughs> David, the Lord bless you and enable you faithfully to keep his promise. Now I welcome you to sign the prescribed formula. And as you sign, I also want to invite Reverend Hugh Conkey to come forward, after which to bless David and lead us in prayer. Let us all pray. <coughs> Loving Father, who calls us to be your own through faith in Jesus Christ, your Son, and pours out upon all your people your Holy Spirit, we thank you for our brother David, for all the gifts and graces which you have given him, and for all the ways in which he has already served you. As we ordain him now as an elder within the church, we pray that you would fill him afresh with your Holy Spirit to strengthen and equip him for all the duties of the office to which you have now called him. Grant him your grace. Fill him with your peace. Give him wisdom and humility, courage and kindness. Make him eager for yourself and give him a clear vision of your purposes and will. Gracious God, keep him, we pray, faithful to the end. That when the chief shepherd appears, he may receive the crown of glory that will never fade away mm. through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King and Head of the Church, I declare you to have been ordained to the office of the eldership, and I admit, admit you to the office as an elder in the congregation and in this parish. As a sign of welcome, I invite the leadership, the Kirk Session, to offer the right hand of fellowship. David, God bless you richly. God bless you.
Thank you, David. God bless you. And thank you. I hope that God will use you really well in Hope Church. And please, um, the Kirk session, would you please gather sh shortly after the service? And then if you're members, please do come and encourage David with a tea and coffee. Thank you, David. <laughs> Let us now sing our final hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you, both now and forever. Oh. Mm -hmm.